amazing people, bonjour, welcome back on the podcast, today is a good day too. That is becoming for this year a special, this month is a good month too, where every month I am taking you for an exclusive journey behind the scenes of my preparation towards Paris 2024 Olympic Games. I am so happy to be with you right now and I am so grateful that you've decided to spend some of your precious time with me today to listen to my stories and to learn with me. And if you're new here, welcome on board. My name is Lucy Herman. I'm a field hockey goalkeeper playing for the French senior women national team and for the Dutch club called Den Bosch. Besides playing hockey, I'm also an inspiring life and high performance coach. Now, what's the purpose of this podcast format? Well, if you're new today, every month I'm sharing with you three key questions, three key topics related with events that happened to me or around me during the month prior. So the goal is to reflect on some situations and grow from them. And of course, I want to share them with you in order to help you in your own daily life. So during each episode, I'm sharing with you mindset tips and personal thoughts that I'm personally using when I'm facing difficult situations as an athlete, but also as a person, and to share them with you the most relatable way possible for you to apply it in your own daily life. My biggest purpose with this podcast is to guide you to think a different way, to see things from a different angle and overall to help you grow your mind, develop your mental strength and become one step at a time, one day at a time, the best version of yourself. All throughout the episode, feel free to write down some notes on your phone or on a paper while listening or you can also record with your phone some moments so that you don't have to write at the same time. And like this, you can go back to everything I said easily. And if you're enjoying this podcast or found anything helpful or if you'd like to let me know that you've enjoyed or if you had any questions, you always can send me a personal message on my Instagram page that is at happylucy. I do read each of your texts and I always reply with the biggest pleasure. Now, this podcast episode is a tiny bit different than the previous ones because as we are just starting this new year of 2024, I decided to not do an episode about reflecting over December, but more to reflect over 2023 overall. So this month, instead of sharing with you three key topics of things that happened to me in December, I'm going to share with you the biggest three lessons, the biggest three reminders that came on my path during 2023. So without further ado, thank you for having listened to this introduction. This month is a good month to reflect over 2023. Let's go! The three biggest lessons and reminders that came on my path in 2023 are the following ones. Number one, after the biggest breakdown comes the biggest breakthrough. Number two, remember things don't happen to you, they happen for you. And number three, in order to protect your mental health, focus on you and don't compare yourself with others. Let's start with reminder number one. After the biggest breakdown comes the biggest breakthrough. This first lesson, I learned it when I got my first shoulder injury, which actually was November 22, but I count it as 2023 because this mantra was very important for me at the time and also because I've had injury because of my shoulder a few times during the year. So I just make it like a year package. And basically, what really also helped me creating this mantra for myself at that time was watching several documentaries mostly with athletes, where most of the time the main protagonist always has some very low moments just before he reaches some very high moments. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that you will not reach any big high if you never go to some very low moments. But the point is, sometimes we really get to remember that the low moments are as important and as natural as the high ones. And they are very important because they are shaping us a different way, but a way that is as important as the high one. Like without them, 
we will never truly be us because sometimes when we feel very low, it's allowing us to refocus, to see things differently, to try different things, to open our mind to different techniques. And that will never be happening without the highs. And then, of course, when you start to, let's say, grow to really reach a certain level, then things get better and you can, let's say, succeed at, at that goal you really have. But it would have never happened without all the different steps you've taken before. It's sort of as if you're trying to climb a mountain. You're not going to just all of a sudden start a journey and climb the Mount Everest. It's all the little steps that you've made that allowed you to reach the top of the mountain. And without all the little steps, without all the lowest moments, you will never reach the top of the mountains. Now, to give you some context, I was creating that mantra for myself because... I was in I was in training camp and I was literally playing the worst hockey I've ever played I think in 5 years. Like I was literally in camp and I was like thinking to myself, I have no idea what's happening with me. I was really focused, I was really giving the best I could and like try to really just give my best and be present and and succeed perform. And it didn't work at all and I was like, okay, I think like I'm I'm just I keep on taking goals on goals and I was playing very bad. And so to help me just keeping my head above water, to help me keep going, I was saying that to myself. It's okay. After the biggest breakdown comes the biggest breakthrough. I know you're in a very low moment right now and you don't really understand it, but keep the faith, keep the hope. It's going to be fine. You're going to be okay in the future. You won't necessarily be okay tomorrow or in next week or in a month, but in the future, you're going to be fine. Just keep the hope. And at the end of that camp, where I played my worst hockey, I got injured. So things even got like worse than than it than it could have been because I got injured for three months. Like I said, I have this located in my shoulder. So really the point of me sharing this today with you is for you to keep the hope. Anytime you're struggling, anytime you're really going through some tough moment, tough situations, even if sometimes you don't understand what's happening to you, you don't understand just really how you got there and you think things could not be worse. Just keep going because after the biggest breakdown comes the biggest breakthrough. So keep the hope, keep your head above water. I don't know, maybe also you're applying for jobs or applying to clubs or anything that you want to apply for and people say no and doors are not opening to you. Just keep going. If you're struggling with getting better at something or achieving something that matters to you, keep going. Or like I said, if you're struggling all of a sudden at something that you're normally good at, just please keep the hope, keep going, keep learning, keep asking questions, keep trying to find a way out, keep the faith because tough moments have not come to stay, they have come to shape you, they have come to teach you something and they have come to pass. And remember that after the biggest breakdown comes the biggest breakthrough. But this thing will only happen, this breakthrough will only happen if you keep going. Even when times are really hard for you, just keep going. Like I always say for myself and for other people as well, work hard, dream big and never give up. Lesson and reminder number two. Remember that things don't happen to you, they happen for you. For this year, I would associate that reminder, that lesson with my injuries. Because I've had three this year. I had a subluxation with my right shoulder two times and a concussion one time. And especially my shoulder injury, my second one was not the best at all. Like was not the best timing at all because it was just before a European Cup. So I really did not have any time to prepare properly. But even though things were at really bad timing, which actually could seem to be like a bad timing... I kept on thinking, okay, it's okay. Things are happening for me. They are not happening to me. I don't understand why it's happening for me now. I don't understand what's the purpose, but I choose to trust it's happening for me. Now, side note for this one, like really important side, side note. If you don't see things from that angle, obviously you totally can. Like you are absolutely right to believe that things are happening to you and not for you. If sometimes like, something is happening to you, the only way you want to react to that event is by saying, dang, this really sucks. And if you don't want to have any optimistic thoughts around it, obviously I support your decision. 
I think I also have like that reaction sometimes, like maybe 10% of, of the time I can just say, oh, that really sucks. But the thing is, for me, the only reason I personally am working on and choosing to have this kind of mindset perspective, it's only because it helps me coping with unforeseeing and unexpected and difficult situation better. I'm really choosing to use this perspective that things are happening for me because it helps me protecting my peace of mind. That's it. And the reason why I I do this and I try to protect my peace of mind is because I've set a goal when I was 16 to always protect my peace of mind as much as possible because I personally truly believe that being in a peaceful state of mind, feeling peaceful, Feeling at peace is one of the most precious things we can have in life. Therefore, many, many times when I'm facing disappointments or frustration or resentments, anger or anything that could be seen as negative, that's the mantra or the perspective I'm choosing to remind myself most of the time. Now, to bring some nuances, of course, if my mom would die tomorrow, I wouldn't start saying at all, yay, yay, it's happening for me, like, it's all good like peace out people no of course because that's a really really hard situation but on the other hand to give you another example three years ago when I still was not selected as first goalie with the French team and I was very very sad about it even though I was crying I was really telling myself it's happening for me even if I can't understand it even if now it's it hurts and it sucks and I'm really sad it's happening for me it's not a punition I'm not being punished or in any way because I'm doing my best to keep working. So if I am not making it yet, if I'm not achieving my goal yet, it's happening for me. Now, if you've never thought of things like this, if you're new with that belief, let's say, you might wonder which kind of benefits I get from that. Well, the benefits are simple yet very powerful. That's why also I'm sharing them with you. Because considering that things are happening for me, allow me to switch my angle from feeling like I'm a victim of a situation to being in control or to being in power of a situation. Let me say that again. Considering that things are happening for me, even if the situation really sucks, allow me to switch my angle, switch my perspective from feeling like I'm being a victim of a situation to feeling like I'm in control, I'm in power of a situation. This angle, this perspective protects you and me and anyone from potential damaging questions like why me, why that, why now? Because these questions, why me, why that, why now, they have no answers. And then very often we get stuck into this perspective, this like self-talk of why me, why that, why now? But because we never have any answer, we keep on feeling stuck in this we never get out and we stay frustrated, we stay angry, we, we stay with our resentment. And it's very hard to let go of it once, once it's, it's, it's staying in us, once these feelings are staying in us for like weeks or months. So instead of asking yourself, why me, why that, why now? Or why are they saying no, like why are they rejecting me or anything? You can switch that perspective to, to ask yourself the following questions. So you can write them down if you want. The questions are, what is this event teaching me? How can I grow from it? And what can I improve about myself in this situation? What did I maybe neglect that this event is showing me I should work harder on? And if you think of other questions for something that you're going through, it's amazing. Because I'm not having like all the, all the questions that are possible. These are important ones, at least to start somewhere. Start from the place of, okay, it's happening for me. What is this even teaching me? How can I grow from it? What can I learn? These things are really going to allow you to feel in power and in control, like I say, because it's going to allow you to feel that, okay, there are still things that you can do to get to the place where you want to go. And that awareness, that mental work, that you can do, that I'm doing, that anyone can do, is just looking for opportunities. And that is very empowering. But also, side note, if you are going through something difficult, it doesn't mean that your feelings are not valid because you think things are happening for you. 
like I said, with the national team, when I was still being second goalie, I was crying. Like I was really feeling my feelings. I was allowing myself to be sad. But in my head, my narrative was not, oh my God, it's not fair. Why me? Like, why can't I be first goalie? Blah, blah, blah. My narrative was like, this really sucks. And still, how can I grow from it? How can I keep on improving? How can I keep working? So it's very important in terms of dealing with your emotions to remember that all your feelings are valid, all your feelings are important. So please feel all of them, allow you to feel all of them. At the same time, protect your peace of mind by trying to look at things from the angle that the tough situation is happening for you. Now, last but not least, the lesson and the reminder number three. Focus on you. In order to protect your mental health, focus on you. Do not compare yourself with others. This one, I learned it a while ago already, but I've been forgetting it <laughs> a bit. And the universe has been very kind enough to bring it again to me on my path lately. Because especially with the Olympic uh, selection coming up, it's very easy to get distracted about what your competition is doing, about how the other goalkeeper is playing, instead of putting only my energy and my focus onto my game. So this reminder to focus on me, to focus on you, is really what I'm carrying with me for 2024. Don't compare yourself with other people. Just focus on you. Focus on what you can do. Focus on how you can bring the best you have in any situation, whether it's at the training, on the field, or whether it's at the meeting room, whether it's with your colleagues, or whether it's with your friend, or whether it's in your nutrition, in your sleep, in how you try to learn things at school, like any situation. Basically, we really, really, really tend to compare ourselves to other people. I know that this is a very, very common thing to do. But it doesn't mean it's a helpful thing to do. It doesn't mean it's a healthy thing to do. I know we have access, especially on social media, with what everyone is doing. But don't compare yourself with others. Don't waste any energy or thoughts and time worrying and comparing yourself to other people. I'm talking about this topic regarding sports but it can also be with any situation like if someone let's say if a teammate has a opportunity to get a brand deal it's really about not being jealous and not focusing on what they get and just focus on you focus on your life like this is something I always try to remind for myself it is that everybody is on their own very unique journey Everybody has things that are meant to be happening in their own life. It's their life. Let them have their own things happening to them. You're going to have yours. You're going to have your things. So focusing on you is really going to increase that peace of mind that you have because you're just going to stop worrying. You're going to stop being mad and jealous. So you can think about it now for yourself. What is a situation? What is a topic where you are very often comparing yourself with whether it's one person, whether it's different people, like a group of people, in which situation are you comparing yourself with other people? And ask yourself, how is this impacting me negatively? How much worry and fears and maybe anxiety or stress am I getting from comparing myself with other people? How healthy is that for my mind? And then ask yourself the following things. How would my life look like? How would my daily life look like? If I would focus on me, what kind of thoughts would I have if I would be just focusing on me? What kind of activities would I do if I would be just focusing on me and not comparing myself with other people? Now, of course, I know that comparing yourself with someone else can give you some extra motivation, extra inspiration, extra energy, because let's say you want to you wanna get to the level of that person. But please always check in with yourself. Really, really, really check in with yourself while you're doing that to see how much of that remains healthy and how much of that becomes too negative, too unhealthy, too toxic for your brain. And when you feel like you're shifting into the toxic part, up, 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 bring your focus back, just focus on you, you know, just take the positive but leave the negative outside of your head and just keep focusing on what you can control. That's it. Whatever you can control, focus on that. Focus on what is in your power because this is going to save you a whole bunch of energy and worry.
that's it champion that's it for the three lessons and reminders i've got in 2023 now it is time for the usual final three questions that i'm asking you in order to help you do some inner work and increase your self-awareness as well you can write down the following questions if you want to join all about it otherwise you can think about the answers in your head question one obviously what are the three main lessons that 2023 taught you question two what is one value and i do mean one value you want to focus on and get better at in 2024 number three what is the first thing you can start doing today or in the upcoming days in order for you to already start working on embodying that value more often? Voila champion, that's it for this month's episode. Thank you so much for having listened. I am so grateful being on this journey with you. Like always, if you've enjoyed today's episode, feel free to share it with a friend whom you think will benefit from learning about today's insights because as you know, we get stronger together. And in case no one has told you today, this is a reminder that you matter, you are loved, you make a difference in this world simply because you are you, an absolutely unique human being. So thank you so much for being here and thank you for being you. Please, 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 please take good care of you and of your mind and of your life because you deserve it. I wish you to have a great day. And if for whatever reasons you cannot have a great day, then that's okay. Just have a day. That's great too. Okay, bye now. You're amazing. You're amazing.